I'm delighted to be with you here. Um, if you've heard me talk about what it takes to succeed in the workplace, um, in a job, in a profession, then you've perhaps come across something that I said. And that is simply that for those who work 40 hours every week, assuming that your standard working hours is eight hours a day, and you work for five days in a week, I say that 40 hours is for survival. Um, I'll clarify what I mean by that. Assuming that you have 10 people in an office and all the 10 people have very similar levels of IQ and ability. Um, they're very similar in their ability to do the job. In terms of performance, they can produce the same amount and quality of work. Assuming that they've been trained um, in the same way to the highest standards. Then I said that if all you did was 40 hours every week and the rest of the, your colleagues, the other nine, did exactly 40 hours a week, at the end of the week, you will all produce a very similar output. And therefore, there's, there's really no differentiation between you and the next person. Now, one assumption I make is you have to exclude the emotional intelligence and your, your attitude. Now I'm just primarily looking at your ability to do the job, which is the functional side. So I said 40 hours is really for survival. If you're going to thrive, if you want to stand out, then you must understand that it's a numbers game. By a numbers game, what I simply mean is you have to understand what we call the law of averages. The law of averages simply says that if you do something repeatedly over a period of time, then you start to get better at it. The more hours you put in, the more your productivity and efficiency increases. And therefore, if you want to stand out, what you do after the 40 hours is when and how we separate the masses. This is where you start to put a, um, some distance between yourself and the rest of the crew. Because now you're investing and you're doing much more than you're being paid for. You're adding more value to the company by investing some more time. And as a result of that, over time, the company will recognize your efforts and they'll probably reward you because you're standing out. Now think about this. You might say, well, I don't have a lot of time. Now, in my experience, it doesn't take so much time to outperform someone else at the same level as you are. If you've ever seen the Olympics, um, and perhaps you've watched any of the sporting events, then in many cases what you find that is that the difference between the number one gold medal winner, the number two silver medal winner, and the number three bronze medal winner for some sports, especially those where there is a, um, a time target, perhaps through running, um, what you find or swimming, what you find is that you're talking about milliseconds, you're talking about fractions, a thousandth of a second, um, that separates these three different levels, gold, silver, and bronze. Interestingly, in, in, uh, in running, the time lag between number one and number two is so close. In, in car racing, in bike riding, in horse racing, the number and the time difference between the first position and the second position is very slim. It seems almost insignificant. However, the price money is always much more. And so by simply investing one extra hour, think about this, one extra hour every single day, if you did that every day, at the end of the week, you would have put in five hours by just doing one hour. At the end of the month, you would have done 20 hours by just doing one hour. Now, we spend, on average, about eight hours every day in the office. So by spending 20 extra hours a month, what you're really doing is you're investing almost, almost three days extra. Now, think about what three days extra would mean and how much of a competitive advantage it would give you above your peers. Now, I'm not really here to talk about the importance of working and doing much more than you're paid for. That's important. That is essential. 
I'm actually here to talk about something quite paradoxical to what I've just shared with you. I'm going to contradict myself. I'm going to contradict what I've shared with you before. But you're going to need some level of insight and wisdom to be able to hold both arguments um, at the same time in your mind. Now, it was um, Scott Fitzgerald that said that the true um, sign of first level intelligence or first rate intelligence is and can be seen from the ability to hold two opposing ideas in the mind at the same time and still retain the ability to function. So I'm going to be saying something very opposite to what I've just talked about. I spent some time the last five minutes talking to you about the importance of doing much more than you're paid for. Now, what I want to talk about next is why you should consider doing it slightly differently and why working extra hours in exchange for money could be one of the worst decisions you make. Now, let me explain this so you understand. About 95% of the population have been conditioned to go to school, study hard, graduate from school, get a job, stay in the job, work very hard in the job, get promoted along the way, along the process, invest in a pension scheme, and if they work hard and they're dedicated, eventually they'll be successful. My father taught me that. I love my father to bits. I think he's an amazing man. I think he's, uh, he's uh, incredible. I consider him to be and one of my great role models. As a matter of fact, I think if I turn out to be half the man my father is, I would be a very good father. He was exceptional. My father taught me about the principle of working hard. My father used to say um, that you have to sweat. Now, those were his words. You have to sweat for what you earn. And that, that wasn't simply saying you have to um, perspire that heavily. He was trying to say that if there's something you want, you have to work for it. You have to work hard for it. And the evidence of your working hard is from your sweating. Now, I come from humble beginnings. And obviously, I come from um, West Africa, where the, the temperature, it's quite, it's, put it this way, it's quite hot. So it's easy to sweat in a normal day. And that's what he was trying to say. You have to put in the labor. You have to go to work and work hard. And do it with passion, with focus, with persistence, and do the best that you can. A lot of what my father taught me in relation to that is right. There is an, an aspect of it that um, should be reconsidered from the point of view of that, that work during the industrial age. But in my age now, in our time, in our generation now, it's important to understand that hard work alone doesn't make you wealthy doesn't make you successful. As a matter of fact, in, in many parts of the world, the hardest working people are the poorest paid. So it's not just about working hard. You, your working hard has to have purpose. Without purpose, you're like a, a Ferrari without a steering wheel. You have all that horsepower, but it's not being directed towards um, a destination. So you need purpose. It's not about doing... Um, a lot of work, the work you do has to have purpose. How you do it, you must come with an intention, you must come with a desire, you must have a dream of what you're trying to achieve. And what I want to share with you is this. All of that concept, all of those things I was told about, really applies to what I call um, almost a poverty-driven mindset. By that, I simply mean anyone working for a job, anyone working in a job, anyone working to earn a salary is working to be poor. I'll say that again. Anyone working in a job, working for an income, working for money, is working to be poor. There are only two ways of making money. There are only two ways of making money. The first is people working for money. And by that, I simply mean they have to exchange their time. They have to exchange their time. They have to be there present. 
they have to be there to give their intellects or their energy, their efforts in exchange for money. That's the first way of making money. The second way of making money is where you have money working for money. And that is where the separation exists between the wealthy and the poor. You see, the poor people or the average believe in working hard. That's important. They also believe that you have to sweat to get paid. That is important. That is okay. But the problem is that they're exchanging the one thing they have, which is finite, which is in short supply. They're exchanging their time for money. Now, time is more valuable than money. So automatically, it means you're on the losing side. Time is more valuable than money, but the value of time is something that increases. When you're born, that your time has no value. Technically, part of the reason I say that is because you have to create value for other people and other people get to decide what they believe your time is worth to them if you're trying to help them solve a problem. So when you're born, you have no value in the marketplace. Now you have a value if you're part of a family, you have a value to the community, you have a value to the country. But in the marketplace, at that stage in your life, you do not have the ability to solve problems. You do not have the ability to create value for other people. And therefore, the, the market compensates you based on what it believes you're worth. As you grow up, as you acquire more skills and knowledge, your value increases. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is this. My recommendation is, it's important you understand that you have to be an employee if you have a job. You have to be an employee, but at the same time, you must simultaneously be an investor. And this is where the principle of paying yourself first comes in, where you take a portion of what you earn, that could be 10%, that could be more, but you take a portion of what you earn and you invest it. And that's money now invested. Money now is working to acquire more money. The more you do it, the more you increase your worth in terms of your assets, the more you get to a point where you're able to live off the proceeds, the income from your assets, and you don't have to work for money any longer. Now, for most people who have a job, they work 40 hours and they work more than that. I believe that you have to start thinking strategically for your future. If, you're, if your desire, and this is um, just my view, if one of your desires or your goals is to become the CEO of a company, then it will be important that you show dedication, sacrifice, your willingness to pay the price and bear the pain. That might necessitate you perhaps doing 60 hours every week or 70 or 80 hours per week. That's a choice you can make. On the other hand, if your goal is to become wealthy, if your goal is to become financially free, if your goal is to become financially independent, if your goal is to go away from the security of a job, then working any more than 40 hours a week is not only, in my opinion, is not only insane, I believe it's also a big disaster to your future. And I'll tell you why. Um, every day, this is, the, this is why I say that. Now, to really get what I'm trying to show, you've got to understand time. Time is the only place in life where we have equality. I'll say that again. Time is the only place in life, time is the only area in life where we have equality. We are not equal in any area of life with the exception of time. Because every day we all get 24 hours, 24 new hours, irrespective of who you are, where you were born, you get 24 hours. And so how you use every hour of every day decides your future. Now from the 24 hours every day, on average, we spend about eight hours sleeping. And therefore, eight hours taken away from 24 hours leaves you with just 16 hours every single day. Now we call both parts, one is called night, one is called day. We call the day waking day, it's when you're awake. Now from the waking day, one of the things you do is you decide that you would invest a certain amount of your time at work. Now, part of that means that 
depending on the type of profession you have, you might need to be at work at 9 in the morning. And that goes all the way till 6 p.m. This is just an example. Eight hours is spent in work. Eight from the 16 hours remaining. However, most of us spend between um, one and one and a half hours traveling to work and the same time traveling back from work. So in total, we spend about three hours traveling to and from work. In addition to that, we spend roughly about an hour preparing for work every day. By the time you wake up in the morning, or depending if you're working night shift, by the time you wake up, prepare yourself, get your things together, then travel, you spend another hour. So every day you're spending about 12 out of the 16 hours for work. That leaves you with only four hours at the end of the entire day. In many cases, it's not enough for most people. Now, my view is this. If you're spending more than 40 hours per week, then you're simply having to trade or exchange the remaining four hours you have for work. And you've got to understand your priorities in life. If family is your priority, it means the more you take away from that four hours, the less time you have with family. That would do one and only one thing. It will frustrate you eventually. If you have another priority, which is your health, Again, you're not spending time on your health because you're having to divert some of your time to work. So my view is this. Your future will be decided by the level of wisdom you have. To be an investor, you have to be a student of investing. So my recommendation is, if you work in a, a job that is 9 till 5, and you're expected to do 8 hours in the office every day, my recommendation is, Work an extra two hours per day. Work an extra two hours per day. Now, two hours every single day would mean that if you were to work for four days, you've worked for eight hours. If you work for four days, then you can request to your management team that you want to take one day off for personal reasons. You're still doing the same amount of time, but you're working... It's four days instead of five days a week. Now, how would you spend an extra two hours at work? Now, you might say this is too much. Now, let me explain how you could do it very simple. Simply, you can choose to get into work an hour before time, before anyone arrives. And I've found from experience that an hour in the office before anyone arrives is almost equivalent to almost two and a half hours when people are present because you have no distractions. Your focus is protected because there's less noise. So work, and this applies if you're working early, in the, if you start in the morning, obviously. Get into the office an hour early. If you have an hour lunch break, split that into two and work for half an hour instead. And then at the end of the day, instead of leaving at six, leave at 6.30. So you would have invested one hour in the morning, half an hour, from your lunch break and another half hour towards the end of the day that's usually two hours now if you do that for four days that it's eight hours now once you've started doing this or even before you even begin agree with your management team that you would like to take a one day off we call that time off in lieu where you say i'm going to work two extra hours every day and i'll do a great job but on friday i want to be given time off personal for personal reasons now if that is accepted then what you should do is take that time, which is a Friday or any other day of the week, and invest that day completely to increasing your financial education for continuous learning for personal development. Because what you will be doing is taking a portion of your salary and you will be investing it. And there is no such thing as a good investment vehicle. Your investment is only as good as your intelligence. So you want to spend one whole day focused on being the best inventor for you, for your future. It sounds very basic, but it's powerful. The difference between those who are successful and those who are not lies in their habits. And one of the things I can tell you from experience, but also I can assure you, is that successful people have different habits to the average people. There are specific things that are done on a consistent basis and one of them 
is the habit of continuous learning. You have to learn every day. Now, I understand that this may not be possible in every area. Maybe the nature of your job may not, it might make it quite difficult. If you can't, that's okay. But let's spin it in a different way. Let's assume that you work 40 hours a week or you do extra work, extra hours. Most people tend to ask to be paid in overtime, which I think is almost a, a ridiculous decision. Why? Because your time is more valuable than money. But when you're paid for overtime, you're also taxed on that time. Think about this. You, you spend extra time working. However, when you're paid, you're taxed on whatever you earned. So my recommendation is if you cannot work four hours a week and there's an expectation that you have to do overtime, then ask for time off in lieu, which is take off, say, well, I'm going to work an extra eight hours every week. For that eight hours every week, I want you to give me one day off, maybe the following week or at the end of the month. But you, what you start doing is you start building up and accruing um, certain time blocks that you can invest that time into your personal development. Now, I hope that's been useful, but understand something. What you do during your spare time is what is going to decide your future and your destiny. So you have to become very intentional, purposeful about how you spend your time.